in an interview, this is RFX Mars, in an interview with Anderson Cooper, Obama essentially called the American Revolution the result of a conspiracy theory. Uh, now there's a long history of that, it's in our DNA, don't you know, the United States was born suspicious of some distant authority. That is incredible bullshit. Anderson Cooper. Now, let me just jump in there. It's fair to call the conspiracy. President Obama, well, yeah. Cooper, because a lot of people really believe this deeply, they don't. No. Well, let's take a look at the real history here. Since Obama obviously knows very little about this country's history. Here's a long list of the different acts. The Sugar Act uh, was tax on sugar, sugar and other textiles, other items such as textiles, coffee, wines, indigo, 1764. Also in 1764, the English Parliament passes a measure to re reorganize the American customs system to better enforce British trade laws, which have been ignored in the past. The court was established in Halifax, Nova Scotia, and will have a jurisdiction over all the American colonies and trade matters. So they established a foreign court. What's happening today? We have foreign courts. Uh, trying to intervene in our country. Currency Act, 1764, prohibits colonists from issuing any legal tender paper money. This act threatens to destabilize the entire colonial economy of both the industrial north and the agricultural south, thus uniting colonists against it. In other words, they wanted to cut them off from any type of independent thinking of what's happening in this country today. Same thing. 1764 in May, at a town meeting in Boston, James Otis raises the issue of taxation without representation and urges a united response to the recent acts imposed by England. Who was it who had taxation without representation on the That would be the Clintons. Okay. 1765 Stamp Act is passed by the English Parliament imposing first direct tax on American colonies. If there's anything that was printed had to have this tax on it. That pissed them off. 1765, the Quartering Act required colonists to house British troops and supply them with food. And I can see where that would piss them off even more. 1765, Patrick Henry represents the Virginia Resolutions to the House of Burgesses, claiming that only the Virginia Assembly can legally tax Virginia residents, saying, This be treason, make the most of it. Also, May the first medical school in America is founded in Philadelphia. 1765. In July, Sons of Liberty, an underground organization opposed the Stamp Act, is formed in a number of colonial towns. I'm going to skip some of this. Uh, in October, Stamp Act Congress convenes in New York City with representatives from nine of the colonies. Congress provides re prepares a resolution to be sent to King George III in the English Parliament, requests the repeal of the Stamp Act and the Acts of 1764, 
petition asserts that only colonial legislatures can tax colonial residents and that taxation without representation violates uh, colonists' basic civil rights. That's not a conspiracy theory, Mr. Obama. By this time, the British had pissed him off. Let's see. And the trouble just kept uh, coming and coming because the British were clamping down. Uh, 1767... Townshend Revenue Acts posed a series of new taxes on colonists, lost out in costs of administrating and administering and protecting and colonies items. Tax for imports such as paper, tea, lead, and paints. The act also establishes a colonial board of customer. Customs Commissioners in Boston. In October, Bostonians decided to reinstate a boycott of English luxury items. And it goes on and on. But Mr. Was the uh, Boston Massacre, was that a uh, conspiracy theory? The Boston Massacre occurs... March 5, 1770, occurs as a mob harasses British soldiers who then fire their muskets point blank in the crowd, killing three instantly, mortally wounding two others and injuring six. After the incident, new royal governor of Massachusetts, Thomas Hutchinson, at the insistence of Samuel Adams, withdraws British troops out of Boston's and nearby Harbor Islands. Captain of the British soldiers, Thomas Preston, is then arrested along with eight of his men and charged with murder. In 1770, the Townshend Acts are repealed by the British. And the Quartering Act is not renewed. And it goes on and on. Obviously, by this time, uh, the Patriots were furious. I don't have time to go over all of this. Uh, but we should talk about uh, the Boston Tea Party. If I can find it on this page. Hang on. Uh, 1773, December 16th, 8,000 Bostonians gathered here. Sam Adams tell them that real Governor Hutchinson has repeated his command not to allow ships out of the harbor until tea taxes are paid. This is from the Tea Act. This is what got this country started. Uh, you know, the British had passed all these laws, and we didn't have any representation. We were saying, hey, screw you. That, Mr. Obama, is real history. That night, Boston Tea Party occurs as colonial activists disguise themselves as Mohawks, Indians, then board the ships and up all the British tea into the harbor because they, the British man of the Oh, uh, they paid a tax on that. No matter what. They gave the, uh, India East India... East India Company or whatever a monopoly on tea. Uh, they wouldn't allow any other, anybody else to import tea. So, basically the colonists would have been forced to pay tea tax. And they didn't like that. That's real history, Mr. Obama. 
They dressed up as... That's how... Where are we getting the term Tea Party, Mr. Obama? It's uh, from the Boston Tea Party because they got tired of the taxes. And what do we have today? There would have been a uh, revolt a long time ago if we had the same people living today. Because, believe it or not, your tax burdens are infinitely higher than they were in those days. Seventeen seventy four English Parliament passes first in the coercive acts, which the Americans called intolerable acts. They shut down Boston Harbor. And it goes on and on, but I think the point's been theory, Mr. Obama. The American colonists revolted because they were being abused by the British Crown and we said, screw you! You know, maybe we wouldn't be independent today if the British had allowed them representation and worked with them. Maybe. But no, they wouldn't do that. They, uh, Force people to take British soldiers into their homes, they set up foreign courts. That quartering thing is the only thing that's not happening so far today. We don't have troops in our or anything. But other things are all happening today, Mr. Obama. Now, Mr. Obama, shall we look at uh, Lexington and Concord? Hang on. Since, Mr. Obama, you are deficient in your history, here's the uh, battle that started it all. The Battle of Lexington. So the British were coming to take the colonists' guns, and... So, they, uh, decided to come and take him. And that is what you want to do. You want to take our guns. You and the rest of your liberal cohorts, Mr. Obama. You already had the Texas government, governor say, come and take him. Uh, <laughs> I got news for you. This country is almost in the same state of revolt as it was before the revolution, Mr. Obama. Uh, it's a totally different situation. Well, not really a different situation. But, uh, we're actually in a state of revolt right now. It's just not turning violent. I don't know about those protesters out in Oregon. They're a different uh, situation. I think that's a fizzle. But you uh, better learn some things real quick, Mr. Obama, because uh, Americans are fed up. And we don't like being told that our I'm sure most Americans are not going to like being told that their country was born of a conspiracy theory. That is absurd. Absurd and ridiculous. It was over taxes. It was over quartering acts. It was at, over coercive acts. It was over the British government regulating colonies without any type of representation. And that's what it was about, Mr. Obama. That's the history, Mr. Obama. Why are, how did you ever get to 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue when you don't know your history, Mr. Obama? You don't know the history of the country that you're running, Mr. Obama. <sighs> oh.
unbelievable. Now you, Mr. Obama, have been trying to push the American people into another revolution. You're the one that's been trying to push this. Um, hopefully it doesn't happen, but I don't know what the future holds. You're the one that's been pushing for it, not us. I'm our facts, Mars. I better quit mine uh, before I get too angry. <laughs>